Good morning, everybody. Let's start the class in five minutes, okay? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, how are you? Let's start the class in five minutes, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Other way around. You say me the other way around. You may be shifted. Okay. Oh, see, they have banana. Banana, Good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Good to see you guys. Today we would start off with some scenarios. Okay. Okay. Just hold on. Put the water back. I'm 
I think nobody started up, but yesterday we talked about restraints, right? Quickly, tell me something about these restraints, what we talked about, how we talk about safety, what we need to know, and how restraints, what kind of restraints did we uh, talk about? Quick. Nima, can you tell me? Okay, so like, uh, there are three types of restraint, like physical restraint, uh, environment restraint. Yes, and? And physical environment and... <coughs> chemical. Chemical. Chemical restraints. Chemical restraints. <laughs> And what we all we... learned about WIMS. Yes. W H I M S. Yes. So, what about what about uh, what about uh, safety? What 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 things we should remember all the time when we are talking uh, about our clients? What are the and what are the safety things we should pay attention to? Allow us. Mm. <clears throat> yes, Nima. What are the safety things that we should look out for? Is that um, when working with the client, don't like leave them. Okay. Don't leave them. Like if you put, for example, if you put them on a chair, you have to like watch them. You can't leave them, or else they might fall. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, um, <clears throat> what else? Mm, what else? Tell me. We talked about some precautions, right? Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also talked about rape and robberies and yes. What about what about droplet precaution uh, and all those things? Anything you remember from yesterday? Yeah. It's like a story. Story. If I if I if I am talking and mm. I, I, if I'm giving you a client and let let me give you in a very simple form. I give you a client and I tell you uh, these are your three clients you will be having for today. Mm -hmm. uh, client A, client B, and client C. Okay, pick both of you. Pick your answers accordingly. Okay. And I tell you for client A, you will be going uh, at their home. Uh, Can you repeat that again? For client A, you will be going to her home at, um, let's say, 9 o'clock. You're starting your shift at 9 o'clock. You're going to go at 9 o'clock. Uh, this is your address. Okay? This is your mm -hmm. address. Uh, 9 a.m. to 9, uh, 10 a.m., you will be with your client A, one hour. You have a one-hour shift with your client A. Here's your care plan. In your care plan, it says uh, change, bed bath, bed bath. I'm saying bed bath. Uh, then let's not talk about medications right now. Okay. Let's keep it simple. And you will have to help her with her housekeeping. changing what would be what are the other things you will be looking at in your care plan i'm just i told you uh, some big things in the care plan how would you start up your day we have talked about it right 
let's see what with client A, what you guys would do. So when you first walk into the house, mm -hmm. you put on um the sh like the sh like the bag shoes that you always put on, mm -hmm. and then you wash your hands, mm -hmm. and then you go, you talk to her, hey, like I'm here for this, this, this. You explain to her for what you're here for, mm -hmm. and then every step you like everything you're doing, you have to walk her through it. For example, if you're gonna give her a bath, you say, hey, I'm gonna give you. It's time for us, you know. It's time for you to take a bath now, okay. and um, if you're gonna do something, you always have to let her know before you do it, mm -hmm. so she could so be ready. Like for example, if you're gonna tell her to stand up like you have to tell her so she can like be ready to stand up too and then like you know you can help her get up yeah um, if it's time to brush your teeth you say okay it's time to brush your teeth i want you to brush your teeth now and then like you basically show her how to do it if she doesn't know and if she knows it then she will do it you just have to like if you if she can't hold it for herself you hold it for her okay. and then if it's time to feed her you say okay it's time to eat food now and then, like, you give her the spoon. If she doesn't have, if she can't eat it for herself, then you have basically feed her. Yes. Good. And what else you have to look into? Um, If you're going to give her medicine. Mm -hmm. Are we going to give her medicine? No, you're not today. Today, you're not giving the medication. But we will talk over, I will show it to you how dot works what dot means what the packaging looks like we'll talk about that but uh you are going on the very right track there are quite a few things you have to make sure that you have to look look into more mm -hmm. what would be those um good 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 think more think more a little more stress on your changing when you're changing her mm. I will not say where. Oh. <laughs> I want. That's what I want you to. I want to see whether it, is it coming in your mind or not. Basically, when you're changing her, um, or I don't. That's all I remember for now. But when you're changing, you basically have to like everything you do. You have to let the client know. You just walk. That's that's her. very true. What about your safety? Oh, my safety. Um. Um, remember to follow the pet policy check if there's any right oh check. any pets yes check mm -hmm. if there's any logbox what's the number of the logbox so you get in you clock, you clock in the right time you clock out on the right time remember all mm -hmm. these things if you see today I'm good I can be sick tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you see a flu, you will have to report it. Hey, FYI, I went to the client's home. Uh, the client has flu today. If you don't have a mask on mm -hmm. or it's not with you, just because we don't have mask policy, right? Right now, it's yeah. not that it's mandatory now. It's It was before, but not now. But if you have, uh, but if you don't have it with you now and mm -hmm. somehow you got flu, yeah. because you reported, you went to the client, he had flu, you can get covered. Yeah. Remember? All the time, think of things ahead. Present and ahead. Always, always make sure when you are doing things, you have to make sure that you are thinking of the things um, on time and ahead as well. What if we are not in a state of uh, putting masks, mandatory masks? Yes. Uh, or even if I had a mask on, but I reported the client has flu, the, the case manager, the nursing supervisor to whom you reported, he or she should get connected to the case manager. Let them know that this client has flu. If ever he or she needs to go to the doctor, she needs to see the uh, hospitalist, she needs to get checked. 
that, that thing. And secondly, even if you're wearing a mask and things go wrong, you can get covered. You can, you take a day, you take a day off, uh, one day off, two days off. If you are permitted, you will be paid. We always have to think in a holistic picture. Holistic picture means something which is wonderful and working safely, confidentially with you and your client. When we talk about client safety, we always, always make sure we talk about client safety, yes, from our side. But at the same time, we also think it should be safe for us. For instance, I gave you a scenario. This scenario. This, it could happen that when you enter, the client is on the ground. She already fell down because she was trying something of her own. The best thing you do that time, critically think, hey, are you breathing? Are you hurt? You see if there's any blood around? And then you call the nursing supervisor right away. Ahead from that, you can, uh, this is like the, the client is on the ground, facing downwards, facing upwards, on the right, on the left side, whatever the way the client is, um, you would say, and then you would say, uh, a client states, simple client state, I was trying to reach my phone, I was trying to reach my glass of water, mm, anything. I was trying to reach something and I just fell down, felt weak, fell down, did not hit her head or client stays, I hit the head. Because based on that, if she hit the head or she did not hit the head, she needs to go and see the doctor. No, no, uh, no uh, bleeding apparently because you cannot see any bleeding. If ever this client is able to now get back into the bed easily, okay. If not, you will have to say, oh, she used to use a walker. She was one person. I say something happened. She fell weak. She fell down. You're trying to assist her back into the bed, assisted back in bed, very heavy at this time, unable, un simple as that, unable to, uh, uh, unable to get back to the bed. See, you would write yourself, you would tell them, tell that writer somehow put the client in the bed. Patient safe now in bed, bed at the lowest position. Then, if ever you get a backache, tomorrow at least you're covered. That's why I told you I'll give you some scenarios, real life scenarios where you think how things can go right, how things can go wrong. I get inside my, I just finished my shift. Let's say I went into the nursing home. Now that I have 15 clients, 14 clients, and we just got in. Oh, when I look around for my safety check, because remember I told you guys, and I'm over and over telling you, before the start of your shift, no matter what it is, whether a nurse or a uh, care aide, everybody does their own safety check. Safety check means you quickly go around in the your patient's room, whosoever you have, however how many you have, you see everybody is breathing. They're all safe. Because if I start at 9 o'clock and I start from room 1, could be room the client in room 7 is already on the ground. Till I reach him, if I only take 10 minutes in each room, things can be bad. He might be bleeding. 
So the quick thing we do is if I start my shift at 7.30, right away I go, quickly go in everybody's room. Everybody is breathing. Everybody is there. Boom. Then I start with my easiest to my heaviest. From my independent to total care. Because total care, I'm not doing, I'm not able to do alone. Total care means more than two people, two person assist. Till my uh, partner will also finish her assignment, I will finish mine. Then we can do this client last. Maybe she also has some total. Think of scenario when we say, "Oh, I got in, and I don't know the patient in my room." You can simply go and tell your nurse, hey, I don't know the client in room 10. Uh, she's very, very, uh, right now, aggressive. And things can get, she will go, she will check, oh, what happened? Are you okay? Are things going on with you okay? We can ask, are you in pain? You can ask, are you in pain? Do you need any medication? I'll let your nurse know. So those are some of the things that we always have to pay attention on. We we cannot uh, neglect things saying uh, about this. So what we do is we always ask uh, what's wrong. We look into safety of our clients. We look into our safety as well. Okay. Today, uh, 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 we have the chapter here is uh, excuse me ma'am <clears throat> i think uh, nima is uh, asking me to accept her to the zoom uh, where is it i don't get her message uh it's in the group chat hold on let me see maybe because i put the chapter on I'll put it like this. Oh, um, she's saying she couldn't see anything from her phone, so she will be joining from her laptop. See, that's what I'm trying to see. Uh, mm -hmm. When she puts it on, I see only good morning from her side. I think she's writing. She's not writing the whole group. She's writing on your side. Because, oh, on the phone she's writing. Okay. I thought she's writing on this one. Hmm. I'm looking at the Zoom link. What happened? Okay. No worries. Hold on. Hold on. Let's wait for her to get back.
coming back. Oh, ma'am, I think uh, Ron have to accept her because he's the host. He's the host, that's why. <laughs> Let me see. She's coming. Okay. Okay, Thank my you. dear. Okay, so let's share it. This one is for you guys. This is very, very important when, when it comes to bed making because it's part of support worker's job. Beds and bed make. Client, they spend a varying amount of time in bed. So you completely say that they do a complete bed rest. Client is never out of bed. When see, if your client is always in bed, as I told you, they are called totals. If your client is a total care, that means he's in complete bed rest. He will never come out of the bed. It's just only we reposition them. If ever they are coming out of the bed, you need a ceiling lift to have them on the chair. But sometimes there are clients who cannot even be in the chair. Even if you want to move them with a ceiling lift, they cannot sit up in the chair. They are completely in the bed. Best and only thing we do is we re reposition them every two hours. So those who do not move out of the bed are the ones who have, who we can say is a complete bed rest. Then uh, uh, we have partial bed rest people, clients that can get up for bathroom. Bathroom does not only mean who can go out in the, who can go to the washroom, it can be bedside commode as well. So for those are partial bed rest. They cannot move of their own. They're not independent, but somehow they can go up in the commode or they might be even able to go to the washroom. Client use bed only to rest as desired. For these clients who are, uh, who we say are partial bed rest people. They sleep in the bed, they eat up, they, they sit up in a chair for their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes even for some snack, they can use the washroom. Those are the clients we say partial bed rest. Okay. A clean, dry, and wrinkle-free bed. Yes. It promotes client's comfort and safety. It helps to prevent uh, skin breakdown. It helps to prevent ulcers. So when we say a client has a dry, if your client is not dry, then simple as that, your client will be at a risk of skin breakdown. If your client has wrinkles in, sometimes when they sleep, the um, soaker pad or the transfer sheet gets wrinkly 
or their clothes get wrinkly when they sleep on it for a long time those wrinkles cause skin breakdowns so to prevent these skin breakdown and pressure ulcers anybody who is left in the bed for more than 2 hours without repositioning skin breakdown will start pressure ulcers will start so remember that's why the thumb of rule reposition every two hours. Client's room and furniture equipment. Client rooms are furnished and equipped for comfort and safety in any facility. Over bed tables, bedside furniture, chairs, primary curtains and screens, privacy curtains and screens, closet and, dra and drawer space, bathrooms and beds. Your client this is everybody knows but privacy curtains you you might you will have those the ones if you have a semi shared room or a uh, sharing room with four people you will have those uh, privacy curtains and, and also if your client he or she is uh, uh, in the hallway you have an extra client you work in hospital you extra client we don't have a bed we put it and put the client in the hallway bed. We do have a screen. It's uh, a steel um, screen and we just open the flap. We make a uh, privacy curtain with because we can't hang. It's in the middle. There's no hooks. So what we do is we use a stand that is a screen stand just to provide privacy. The client's bed. Do the following to keep the beds neat and clean. Straighten linens whenever loose or wrinkled and at bedtime. When we, when in the morning, we call it AM care, morning care. During the morning care, when we change them, take them out, uh, sit them up in the chair for breakfast, we do make their beds. We make their, we straighten their linens. We check uh, if they're loose, we tighten them. We make them wrinkle free. Check for and remove food and crumbs. If your client eats in bed, what we do is when we sit, it, we have to make sure that we make their bed in the morning. What we do, we remove the bed crumbs from them. Or sometimes they only sit for breakfast or lunch in the chair. The rest they eat in the bed. Again, we make sure all the time we change this. Check linens for dentures because they're wearing, they're using dentures. They're using eyeglasses. They're using hearing aids, sharp objects and other objects. You have to look because if ever you would, uh, you're changing the bed, you will not keep an eye on it. You will just roll the linens and put them in the wash. Maybe while they were sleeping, forgot to take their hearing aid out one of the earring it fell in the bed. You roll the ring linens when it went for washing, it's gone. So make sure when you are changing the bed linens, look around if your client uses herring gates, if your client is using dentures, look around. Sometimes also be careful. It can be the glasses, not only that uh, a fork pork or other things can be left it can also poke you so do things carefully change linens whenever they become wet soiled or damp if the if your client um, was not being changed overnight definitely he's incontinent or she's incontinent it will be wet follow the standard practices okay the client's bed, there are uh, two types of bed. One is regular bed, which is a twin, double queen or king size bed that we say. And the other one is hospital bed. They are electric and manual. We deal with electric beds. Now, if your client is in a facility, then 
could be they they try to get their uh, room as private they might have the regular bed if you are going in your client's home you will have a regular bed you will not have a hospital bed hospital bed would be for those who are in residential care in maybe a partial room or in a sharing room um hospitals uh, but if you go to home care if you're doing home care, they might not have a hospital bed. They might have a regular bed. Good mattress is neither too hard nor too soft. We know that, right? Alternative pressure mattress, yes. This mattress is used mostly for those who are total care, who are completely in bed. These, they are... Uh, this pressure mattress is you don't put linens on it. You only put one sheet on it. That's it. The purpose of this is to uh, allow air because your client um, uh, cannot move, can is in the bed for a long time. What we do is we just put that client. It has special, um, it's been made specially so that it allows air to move and it does not cause pressure also so we don't cover it we only put one linen or we put a transfer sheet on it that's it these alternating pressure mattresses the special mattress that has alternating uh, areas of pressure of air gel or water baffles to reduce risk of pressure so i told you this those small like uh, i can't explain it like this but uh, when you look into it, um, it's different. It's a blue mattress. It is not a regular. It's so, uh, soft jelly. Welcome, Amrit. Good morning. Good morning. So that kind of mattress is being used for the clients who are total care, who are in a long, for a long term. These are very, very expensive ones. It's not a bed. It's only a mattress, folding mattress. So we, we don't use it for everyone. We only use it for those who can either pay for it. You have we we don't pay for it. It is the facility cannot pay for it. Hospitals pay for it, yes. But if you are working in residential home, then it would be the family who will pay for this. See, this is also a hospital bed. That's the, this one is a double hospital bed with the patient control. You have these on the, some, some of the new beds, they are at the, they have it at the foot. The one that is in the picture is the old bed uh, that they have. This one has a remote control. Nowadays, the beds, they have it on the sides and on the front so that the client can also access it. This one is a manual one. You have to, you will have two blades. Like this, you move the head, you move the foot. Okay. These are the brakes. Please make sure before you move your client, before you touch your client, look for the brakes, they're on or not. If then, when you put the client in a bed, if your brakes are not on, you try to sit them up, it moves, they can fall. So make sure before you provide any care, you get into the client's room, the bed is locked. Safety measures. Manually operated beds may have cranks to the elevate head and foot. All cranks should be pushed in after use to uh, avoid any bumping into them. Because they're the manual ones, uh, they go one and then the other one, they do get that thing. But when you uh, place them, after placing them, just simply use your hand. All beds should be left in the lowest position. This is thumb rule again. No, no matter what it is, 
you have to put all the clients in the lowest position. Bed wheels are locked when giving bedside care. Whenever you're giving, providing care, whenever you're touching your client, make sure the bed is locked. Bed wheels are locked when you are transferring uh, a client from a chair to a bed. So the thumb rule for you to remember, you get into the client, knock, introduce yourself, let them know who you are doing something. Second thing, touching your patient, before touching your patient, make sure the bed, the chair, wherever the client is, it's locked. Because if your bed is locked and you're moving the client from the bed to the chair and your chair is not locked now, it's not locked right away, he might or she might trip. So making sure the client is Client's bed and chair both are locked. Third thing, whenever you are sitting them up, I have already told you if it's the wheelchair, and uh, those flaps, they're removed before you put them there. Because if the flats, flaps are uh, on, before you put them there, they can come in your way. And uh, because of that, and they might get hurt. Bed is at the lowest position. First, providing care. When you provide care, make it to your waistline. After you finish providing care, put it back to the bed. You cannot put bed in the lowest position and then provide care. No bending. I've already told you. No bending. Raise the bed up, up, up till the point where you provide. you can provide uh, care comfortably and once you are done everything is done back to the lowest position am i clear i don't want to create confusion again we never never give care in the lowest position we bring it up to our waistline where we can provide care easily and then once everything is done you have to leave your client should be in the lowest position Bed at the lowest position. Bed position. There are seven basic positions. Flat position that everybody knows. Follows position, a semi or upright sitting. That means if this is your client, that, oh my God, I'm so crumb. Like this. Little bit up. 15 to 30. Low fallers. Again, just like this. Semi follows around 45, a bit higher. Then we have high followers, which is more than high followers is uh, more than 45, less than 90. Uh, if you are sitting your client in high followers at 90, you say it's an upright position. The other name for high followers at 90 is upright position. Uh, this Trendelberg, this is a very, very uh, nice position. If you are moving, if your client is heavy, if your client is heavy and you don't want to break your back, what we do is we bring the bed up. You do the Trendelberg's position. Trendelberg's position means going on this way. So, Either the head would be completely up or either the foot will be completely down. Then reverse Trendelberg is other way around. Head will be down and foot will be up. With that position, you would be able to pull your client easily up because they slide. This is, this is reverse Trendelberg. This is head. This is foot. This is your reverse Trendelberg. The client's head will go completely down like this 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 is the head and this is foot foot will be up normal trendelberg is head up feet down this one is when we when uh, the physicians are uh, checking the clients um, but this one is for our position if our client is heavy we put them in a reverse trendelberg head goes down and you put it higher so it will become like this 
it's easy, they slide. When you when your partner and you pull them, they just slide. Then we put them back. Reverse Tendelberg position is required when your clients are two person heavy. Even if it's one person and you are moving the client off your own, put them on a reverse Tendelberg. Hey, Mr. Smith, can you push with your feet up? Yes, he would slide down. Okay. That's your bed position. This is not semi follows. This, this is more than semi follows. And this position is going for even this can be high follows, but not high follow upright. See, high, this is high, high follow 90. This is called an upright position. Again, look at this. The, this one is straight, then semi follows. A little lower than this would be low semi follows. This is high follows position. This is high follows upright position. This one is reverse tendril work. See, even we put, we raise the bed a bit up and feet up, head down. When you pull, you ask them, it becomes easy to move. This one is trendle works. Now we have linen. When handling linen and making beds, practice and medical asepsis. Perform hand hygiene. Check linen for misplaced personal belongings. I told you, whenever you are changing your client, you, whenever you are uh, changing their bed, whenever you're making their bed, please make sure you look for their personal belongings. If your client is using a denture, if your client is using glasses, if your client has hearing aids, watches, jewelry, make sure they are not in their linens. Because they're old, they're uh, weak, they might have used it, they left it in the bed, we rolled it without looking at it. It might go for washing and lo get lost. Your uniform is considered dirty. Always hold linens away from your body and uniform. Yes. And my dear, whenever you are changing, no matter how your client is, whether he is on precautions or not, try to put a gown down. We don't want bugs from anywhere to go, come up on a uniform. We carry it on everywhere. So whenever you get in, your gloves on, put a gown on. It doesn't take too long. Never shake the linens because this will, we don't shake them, just roll them and dump them. And when they are in the bed, with your hand, check for their personal belongings. Okay? Place clean linens on a clean surface. Never put clean or dirty linens on the floor. Neither you put clean linens on the floor, neither you put dirty linens on the floor. Always, always on the side of the bed because we can wipe that bed with a cabbie wipe. Even if your client has fully bag, we don't put the fully bag on the ground. No, always on the bed. These are straightforward, uh, standard rules, no matter what place you work in. Take, all, take only the linens you need into the client's room. Yes, we don't take extra supplies. It's not about linens. It's about anything. We don't take extra because we never know if that client has infection. We don't want to carry he, that infection to another client. If you have taken extra linens in the room, you will leave it there. We'll use it for the client tomorrow. Collect required linens in the reverse order you will use. Top sheet, a blanket, a soaker pad, transfer sheet, a fitted sheet, 
that's it from because first we'll put a blanket sheet then it would be a soaker pad then it would be a transfer sheet then is our fitted sheet that's how we go in a reverse position place a clean linen on a clean surface they have a bedside table you always use the bedside table to put the clean supplies there if it's soaked the bed is soaked and always take an extra towel because if the bed is soaked uh, and you have to change the bed after you remove the soaked linens there can be traces of that wetness on the bed you don't right away go and put the new linens on no you get a cabbie wipe you wipe it get a towel dry it up then you start putting on the new linens okay remove dirty linens one piece at one roll each piece away from you do not allow it to touch you wet damp or soiled linens are changed right away everybody knows that wear gloves and follow standard practices Immediately place used linens in a laundry container or laundry bag. Always make sure that you get in the laundry bag, the big basket, you have it nearby. Soil linen should never be placed on the floor as it contributes to, I told you guys, we don't put them, we always, if you, if you see that it's too wet, try to begin the a laundry bag near nearby you so that you can just change and throw it there don't just wait i'll one by one no whatever you have because normally we don't change the bed like this what we do is if your client is on um it's normally uh, total care you turn the client on one side like this you open the upper and the lower flap of the bed and everything that goes in the middle gets rolled here. It becomes a bum. Leave the bum there. Start putting in the new linens right away. You don't go back and forth. Then you will be left in the room forever and ever. You rolled it, bummed it, leave it there. Put the top linen, new linen on, bottom linen on. Squish it, squish it, squish it. Get your soaker pad. Squish it. Get your pad that you apply on the client. Leave it. Ask your client. There will be a bump you will feel. Can you roll on the other side? Along with the bump, your client will roll on this side. The old linens will be removed. The new linens will be pulled. And it is done. It takes three minutes to change the bed. If you first remove one, then put on new one. Then put the client, you will be left there forever. You will never ever come out from the client's room. Uh, if your patient is able to roll on the side, ask him to hang on to the side rails. Make sure that time the side rail is on because you're turning. Before you start changing the linens, Make sure you loosen both ends so that you just have to pull and it will come out. If your client is heavy, then first remove the uh, bottom area, put the new bottom area on. Whatever area you're removing, put that side on. Don't go back and forth. Don't break your back by going back and back and forth. It has to be you learn strategy. Some people, they do first open, then put, then uh, get the client, then put the brief on. Eventually, you get tired uh, with one or two clients and you're done. You cannot go ahead. Okay? How often linen is changed varies from each uh, employer, agency, and the care plan. Not only employer and policy. If your client is wet, 
Would you leave him in the soaked bed? No. In all settings, linens are changed when wet, dye, damp, or soiled. Yes, we follow agency, employer, and care plan. But another thing that we know is if our client is wet, if our client is damp, if our client is soiled, we need to change no matter what it is. How many times? A turning pad or a turning sheet, which is called a transfer sheet as well, is a small sheet placed over the middle of the bottom sheet. It's used to turn over and move the client in the bed. It's also called as sliding sheet, pad, or transfer sheet. I told you we call it a slider sheet or we call it a transfer sheet. Sometimes inaccurately referred to as draw sheet. Nobody says draw sheet. The only name you will hear is, can I get a transfer sheet or a slider sheet? Both of them are same things. Where turning pads are unavailable, flat sheets are folded into the size of a turning pad. Turning pads prevent pain, skin damage, and bone and joint damage by protecting the client's skin from friction, shading when the client is moved. Mm -hmm. The purpose, why this turning pad or uh, transfer sheet or the slider sheet is used, it is smooth from one side, slippery, and the other side, the, the sides are head, like cottonly heavy, but the middle is, it's kind of a synthetic material that easily slides. No, even if your client is heavy, your client slides easily. Because if you sit them up on a cotton sheet or on a soaker pad, the, so the purpose of soaker pad is to stick with the bed and do not move so that they don't get wet. But the purpose of this slider sheet is to move them easily. That's why we put a soaker pad, then we put a transfer sheet. And if we have to pull, we can pull with the transfer sheet. Soaker pad is very hard to um, transfer. We cannot transfer. We, even though, uh, honestly, we do do use it just because sometimes there are none uh, sheets, but soaker pads we have. There are two types of soaker pads. One soaker pad is that we use, uh, use and throw. The other one is that goes in washing. I don't know what facility you will be working, what hospital you will be working, which one would you be able to use? The um, disposable ones or the washables? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the name of the bed sheet which is made out of uh, plastic? You know, like last time I went to one client for housekeeping and then like while making bed, I just saw, you know, like, there's a plastic, he's an old guy, so he has plastic around his bed mattress. I think it's not so good. Thing. Was it not a fitted, bed. was it a fitted one? Yeah, yes. It can be um the one that is provided by the family. Normally, with the one uh, that we use first is a fitted sheet which is white white with yes. a green line white with a green line all the on the edges that is called a fitted sheet on top of the fitted sheet we not every time but sometimes depends on the facility they have a loose sheet which you have to learn to put in on the sides after mm -hmm. loose sheet we put a transfer sheet. On top of transfer sheet, we have a soaker pad, then your client, then the final blanket. It could be the client is old and is incontinent. That's why they are the fitted. The fitted sheet is um, the one that goes the first. 
some people always that's what i told you some facilities might use disposable ones even sucker pads not everyone uses the washables they use disposable If you are helping your clients at uh, some facilities, you will see plastic urinals. They go for cleaning. And some out of 900, 95 would be disposable. We don't, uh, these, the basins and all that we use are all uh, disposable. But cost cutting is there, you know, some facilities are uh, the ones that are not really having funds. They are being funded by um, some group home, like some group homes, they are being funded by uh, the cancer society, by regular people, partially or uh, helped by Fraser Health, partially helped by provincial care. So they don't have much funds they can use. Use those things. This bed making is very, very important. Safety and medical asepsis are important. The closed bed is made after a client is discharged. Once your client is discharged, once your client, God forbid, passes away, it's called a closed bed. It means the bed is not occupied. Well, if your client is there, he stays there, it's called occupied bed. Once your client is discharged or passes out, it's called a closed bed or you can say open bed. For a new client or a resident, the, after the bed frame, the mattress are clean and disinfected. Yes. Not only after, if your client is mm, soaked, again, if your client is soaked, has an infection, some kind of infection, housekeeping has to uh, can be wiped. Top linen is pulled up, bedspread is pulled over, pillows are changed. The open bed is made for newly admitted patient persons arrived by wheelchair, clients who are getting ready for the bed, clients who are out of the bed for a short time, clients who are out of the bed only for a short, short time. Top linens are uh, fan folded back so that the client can get back into it. The easiest way to make a bed is if your client is able to sit up in a chair. If you uh, know your client can sit up in the chair, um, sit them up uh, in the chair, make them ready for the breakfast and start. That would be the best time. See? The white one is the transfer sheet. They have this panel and upper blanket on. bedside table that's but that's not a regular bed a fire not a regular bed you make an occupied bed when the client stays in bed keep the client in a good alignment follow restrictions or limits of the client's moment or position maybe it, the client has fractures maybe the client has spinal fracture or maybe the client has what we say is uh, aspen collar, so you might not be use you might not be turning them too much. Sometimes they have um, lumbar fractures. Sometimes they have discs, so you might not be able to move them. You only have to roll roll them. For that, you will have to use a boat. Explain each procedure step by step to your client before you do it. Raise the bed to maintain good monument mechanic. I told you, always whatever care you perform, 
you raise the bed at your waist level, at the level where you feel it's comfortable. Once you reach to the comfortable state, you change the bed, you did everything, you uh, made sure you made the bed, made sure that you help your client, you have cleaned him up, then you will put the person in the lowest position. Okay? When the client is in the bed, the slide is over. Let me get here. Just give me two minutes. I'll get the book. I'll see what your book has, if there are any questions in the book, and then we'll go on for the next slide. How is that? Okay? Give me five minutes. Just give me one.
I'm using it on my phone, but I can't see the slides. So can the you slide is stopped for now because the slide is over. Yes, oh. dear darling, the slide is over. Let's see. Let's see. We are here. We are here. Um, yes, my dear. Can you accept me on my laptop? My phone is too small. We, we are already in, I, I'm not the person, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, the host is, is the, Yes. The phone is too small, so I can't really see everything. It's okay. We'll, we'll see if you can. Um, what is this? Do you guys have your books around? The one where we write things on? Yes. Before the end of the before the end of this, you will have to present this book. It will be too much for you guys to work then. Remember, I have uh, on the day one, I told you guys you have to make it. You have to make sure that. Present in front of the whole class? Yes. We are not going to the we don't go to the school now doesn't mean that we are not going to do this so make sure you are always up on this book okay yes my dear you have true and false here yeah? For this one, and then you have a closed bed. What chapter? We are doing bed and bed making, chapter 21. There are good okay, questions. So every... You are up to 21 chapters, everybody. <laughs> See? It's been a long way through. Please check if you need help with these. Uh, do them and then uh, let me know where uh, if you need help anywhere at any point. Wait, because I stopped at chapter six. You want to start at chapter six? Because I, like, I stopped at chapter six because you told mm -hmm. me to do it. So keep going, please, and look for uh, any... Uh, I want you guys to finish this by this weekend. Wherever we uh, are done up to that point, at least then you don't have to do too many things at one time. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't really, really, really say. I told you bottom sheet, hospital bed, occupied bed, open bed, and closed bed. We talked about this one. This book is your homework, not my homework. We will not be doing this. Let's see whatever we have here. Let's see if we have the infections. Skin care. Mm -hmm. Your your book talks about overbed tables. Overbed tables are the ones. These tables, they are positioned on the top of the beds. They are uh, normally in hospitals. They are not in long-term care facilities. It's just that these old bed tables, they are used for placing meal tray, eating, reading, writing, and other activities. Then you have bedside tables. Bedside table, everybody should have. And bedside table is uh, one for everyone. Uh, then chairs, we know about those. Privacy curtain and screens, I told you already about this. Your book shows us a picture. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's about a curtain which is wooden. No, it's not wooden. We don't use wooden at hospital. We don't use wooden at um any facility. This is... A three panel, it's a three panel and it's a meta it's in the metallic rod. In between the two rods, there's a curtain. 
that gets folded. It's a folded curtain. We use it if we have to do a procedure. It's used to divide if ever, let's say, you have a client uh, room and before in the client's room, there were, there were only two client, clients. Suddenly something came up. You have to put a third client in. That time we use this for a short term to uh, divide it to provide privacy. If ever there's a procedure that needs to be done and needs more privacy, the curtain cannot be reached. We get this um, uh, sh uh, curtain. It's it's portable. It's a screen shield. We bring it up and that's there. If you have a um, client, not client, patient, sorry, uh, patient, you are up to 21 beds in a hospital. There's an emergency. We reached up to 30. We reached up to 21. And so we had to put patients in hallway. Those are called hallway beds. Hallway beds are not regular beds. It is just an emergency when we have, when the numbers are high, you will have people who are who will be in the hallway. The same bed, everything is same, but they don't have a curtain on. So we use these shields, beds, shields, uh, screens. We use them to provide them privacy and to create a kind of demarcation that this area is restricted to this client, even though it's a hallway. That's how we use this portable screener. We call them portable screeners. We use them uh, for assigning hallway beds. I need um, someone changed in the hallway. Can we change? No, I will need a dressing chain. Client needs to sleep when he's in the hallway bed. So these portable screens are used for all those things. What do we have here? Uh, regular beds, we talked about those hospital beds, we talked about those. The ones that have those grooves, I told you, those are called manual right? beds and linens, a set of linens. Remember always, a pillowcase, a top a finnel uh, blanket, soaker pad if we go from from outside to inside it will be you will need a blanket finale blanket then it would be a pillowcase it will be a soaker pad it will be a transfer sheet a, um, a loose sheet and a fitted sheet if you have air mattresses we don't put uh, these uh, so many sheets we only put fitted sheet on it and simply a soaker sheet soaker pad that's it always make sure when your clients are in the bed another thumb rule unless 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 he or she is on any precaution feet should be elevated either that manual screw groove either with your buttons that you have automatically if the bed doesn't work and it somehow does not have that option get a, a pillow put a pillowcase on it and offload their feet between the two legs again safety when we talk about we talked about yesterday about safety uh, when you are sitting up, think of this one. You put your arm on the other arm for a long time. If you have this bone here and this bone touches another bone, it starts to hurt. It starts to break down. Between if one leg is flapping on to another leg or the two legs are together, make sure you get a roller, uh, those towels or you get a sheet you put it between so that they do not stick on each other and they do not break down the skin okay there's no skin breakdown always always make sure to protect the skin in that way mm, this doesn't say but 
when I look at some things, I can get an idea of. He's doing it. If you guys have your books in front and you can check on page 466. Do you guys have books in front or no? Check your book on 466 um, page, figure 21.19. That's how you wrote the top side you remove, the bottom side you remove. You work on one side and one side. You do not go back and forth. First this, then this, then go around. You would sweat like hell. You will get tired like hell. Simply loosen, pull them, roll them, and done. When you're rolling one side, if it's not too soaked or too soiled, grab right away, put the side, new ones on. We don't want to go back and forth, back and forth. Bed making, incontinent pads. If your if your clients are um, incontinent, they should be. I think there should there will be a chapter of incontinence. But still, I would uh, keep on saying before, if your clients are incontinent, always use uh, pads in between, just to make sure that it stays um, there and it doesn't soak so bad all the bed. Everything that you uh, do, you don't have to do bed making over and over again. If your client is a heavy client, if your client is on water pills, then in that situation, what happens is uh, most of the time, you, you, you have to change the bed every time they pee. So for that reason, what we do is we do get some pads. We place the pads inside the big one so that it will soak the pee and the pee does not come out of the bed, or come out of the pads and soil the bed. We cannot be changed. We can change. It's not humanly possible to change the bed every time they pee. Always think of strategies, safe strategies when you are dealing. Okay. Uh, okay. And what we do is when you are putting your client in the bed again, when you're putting your client in the bed and you make, make sure you pull the blan blanket up that the feet are loose enough. Otherwise, again, it can cause um skin breakdown and it can stop the circulation is that okay mm -hmm. okay let's check now again Please make sure you go through your workbook, you finish your workbook all the time. Another thing is you have to make sure that you position your client in a side lining. Your client should be facing towards you. Make sure if you are pulling them out of the bed, bed is at the lowest position. Their feet can touch the ground. Allow them to dangle their legs. Allow them to take a deep breath in. Then ask them to stand up, sit down again. Then the second time they will get up. Is that okay? Every time you do, make sure you explain the procedure. Do not do without explaining the procedure. Mm. Our next chapter is skin and skin prepare wounds. Okay. Mm. 
Let's do this one. Should be an interesting one. Are you guys able to hold on? Can you see it now? Okay. So the next thing that we are going to talk about is skin care and prevention of wounds. What comes to your mind when it is skin care, when it is prevention of wounds? First and foremost thing should be pressure ulcers. Skin breakdown that is caused by us. Any healthcare worker who is in the hospital, who is in the residential home, who is uh, working in home care, if there is a skin breakdown, it is us. Why? We are, I told you the very first day we started, then you work as a Edit, when you work as a support worker, you are the eyes, you are the ears, you are the mobility devices in a way for the client. If my client is confused, if my client is the one who cannot tell me when I need to pee, how often do I need to pee, it's my job to check on my client at least every two hours. The way repositioning should be done to ours, it should be checked. We should check our clients every two hours. If your client reports that he or she had a BM, and if you leave the patient, if you leave your client in poop, let me tell you, the skin will break down in around 10 to 15 minutes. Why? The food that they eat, one, has bacteria because it comes from our gut. Then the pad that they are in is moist, is closed, is dark. Bacteria love dark, moist situation. The skin starts to break down in around 15 minutes. Please make sure if a client has pooped, try to clean that person right away. This is the biggest problem that we face. Second biggest problem is our clients are not wet, but they are lying in the chair. We do not get enough time. Yes, I understand. We get busy. But we don't get time to reposition. If we don't get time to reposition them, their own bony prominences starts to break their skin down. They don't have fat cushions. They don't have skin like us. Look at your hands and look at the hands of an elder. They hardly have a skin, barely have a thin skin over their hands. And if you put a pressure on it, you sit for a while, it starts to break down. You are the ones to put shoes, socks on them. Please, please, please give it an eye if it's so tight. If we put accidentally on a medium-sized person, a small size uh, socks, you're done. Mm, okay. Let's cleanse. Another thing, skin, when we talk about skin care, you should be knowing people who have been working in mines, people 
who have been working in chemicals, they are exposed to uh, these radiations and these chemical things. Sometimes they are at a more risk of skin cancers. Though our environment is getting bad, everybody is at a risk of ultraviolet rays. But these clients, they have a special, um, you can say, more of their art, more risk than us. Clients who are on radiations, their skin breakdown is faster. Immunocompromise, again, skin breakdown faster. Because these are the people who cannot fight infections. They've lost the ability to fight infections. Or they have minimum, minimum ability to fight. When they have a minimum ability to fight or they are losing their um, ability to fight with their infection, skin breakdown is they are at a risk. They are dehydrated. Again, if your skin is not the if your skin is not hydrated, you're dehydrated, your skin will not be plumpy. If your skin is not plumpy, it means there's no cushioning. Skin breakdown, risk factor. You are on blood thinners, you are at a risk, you get hurt, you get you somehow push something, right away you would start to bleed. You are on uh, blood thinners, you brush vigorously a little harder, your gums will start to bleed. If you are immunocompromised, you'll have ulcers, sore ulcers, canker sores in their mouth. They're dealing with diseases like dry mouth, skin. Breakdown does not mean only in the palm. It can be anywhere. People with dry mouth, don't they? What is our job? We go use sponge, uh, those mouth sponges. They're green, like a lollipop. Put them in ice water, which will be very, very helpful. It becomes cool. You can just do the oral care. We don't have to brush, brush. Just moisten their mouth so that it doesn't break skin. There's no uh, further skin, skin breakdown. Skin care is very important, not only for them, for yourself. If you're washing too many times, I've told you, apply a moisturizer. And when you apply, you don't apply like this. You put some inside this outside you put on top of your hand this is how you apply i've seen people applying like this that's it first layer inside second this the position is this the purpose is this And then do this because these areas are more at a risk. And this is, we know this is harder areas. These are harder areas, but if they get broken down, they don't get regenerated easily also. So make sure you have on your nail beds. That's done. This is your skin. Uh, describe the signs, symptoms, and pressure. Oh. Now, another thing. How will I, if I look at my client, how, what can be the sum of the things that can, you know, come up in my brain? Oh, this person is at a risk. If you see the skin gets red, easily lying on a side, you, you should... 
understand this person is at a risk of blood mm -hmm. this uh, skin breakdown if your client is not eating well has nutritional issues is not eating not only drinking but eating well your client again he or she cannot maintain their skin the skin will not get enough because if you're not eating if you're not drinking well first those areas are heart brain other organs should get Skin will be the last organ to get nutrients. Do you get me? Our skin will be the last area to get any nutrients. That means skin breakdown. That means wounds. Your patient is diabetic. Risk of skin breakdown. Risk of not getting healed properly. Because remember, always and always, clients with diabetes, they cannot, their uh, wound healing is delayed. When the wound healing is delayed, it means if not taken care properly, things can go on the wrong side right away easily. If their blood sugar is not controlled, wound healing will be completely delayed no matter what you do. So this is kind of a holistic picture that we have to look into. Oh, he or she is not drinking well. What can we do? If she hasn't taken her dinner, she hasn't taken her breakfast, um, she ate really small, like 5% of her breakfast, 10% of her breakfast. She did not eat at all at her lunch. Um, dinner, she ate 20%. Is that enough? No. So we can offer them. It's always we can bring uh, ask kitchen to send and ensure. Uh, otherwise, if this is, uh, if you, I'm just talking. I'll talk one by one. If you working in a hospital, you will get insurance easily. If you work in uh, uh, home care, you will have to ask the family to bring in insurance. If you're working in a residential care, you have to report it to the nurse so that the nurse can ask the kitchen to send and ensure. In residential cares, ensure is considered to be a supplement. Again, it's considered to be a medication. Not everybody anytime can get it. And in residential uh, cares, I've seen it, I've worked... Um, they just give you one insure shared for three people at least, like a small glass. But in hospitals, we give it to every person. The availability is abundant. Okay. The skin is the body's first line of defense. It protects from loss, water loss, it protects us from losing nutrients. It protects our organs by having a cover on them. It protects the body from microbes that cause infection. It's a layer, outside layer, like a cloth. You must prevent skin injuries and give clients good skin care to help prevent skin breakdown. Also, please give it to yourself. Do not neglect and forget yourself. In fans, Older people and clients with disabilities are at a greater risk of injury. Yes, people who are total care are at the highest, highest level of skin breakdown, especially elbows, neck, heels, buttocks, uh, ankles. Any bro bony prominence for your clients is at a very, uh, those are at more risk than other organs. Our skin will not start to break down on the shaft of the arm or forearm or the leg. But on our hips, we have bones. Right away, the bone would stay, would put pressure on the skin when you're lying in one position. Anywhere where you see there's a bone, prominent bone, it will start to break the skin off. 
So that's why we need to reposition them. We need to put pillows between the two um, ankles. Please try to have, a, if there's no way you can help, grab a blanket, put it. Normally what we do, we grab pillows. If you're short of pillows, grab a blanket. If you don't have a blanket, uh, grab a towel, roll it, put it between the two legs so that the two ankles are far away from each other. They don't start to break the uh, skin. Roll and put pillows. If your patient has right-sided weakness, roll him on the left side, put the pillows at the back and support him so that he doesn't go back on that side. Weaker side. A wound is a break, a port of entry in the skin or mucous membranes. Common causes are surgery, trauma, immobility or poor blood circulation. That's true. When injury occurs, infection is a major threat. I told you, if ever there is a small, small even cut and you do not pay attention, you do not clean it up, you do not wash your hand, you are putting yourself at a risk of infection. It will become a portal of entry for microbes. You might get infected with some bugs. Wound care involves preventing infection, preventing further injury to the wound and nearby tissue, preventing blood loss, preventing pain, promote comfort. Okay. When we talk about wound care, let's talk about this pretty. When a client, a patient, or a resident has a wound, remember to know what kind of wound first it is. If it's a blister and it's a formed blister, it's different. Please do not put pressure, do not pop them. If this is uh, because open blister might not need any uh, dressing. But if it's a popped already blister, then it needs to have a dressing. Depends on what kind and where the wound is. When we talk about this preventing, it not only prevents blood loss, it also prevents water loss. Have you ever had uh, a bite when you guys see a mosquito bite or something and you scratch it? Later on when you keep on scratching, after you scratch a bit, the blood comes, you would see um, not really all uh, completely transparent, but with a slightly colorish water always accumulates. Those are the nutrients that come, start to come out. We start to lose our body water along with our nutrients. Think of now 10, 20, 50 blisters they have. Think of the different wounds they have. There is a, it becomes a source of nutrient and water loss. So please apply proper moisturize. If you see the back of the client's buttock or anywhere bony prominences are uh, reddened or there's a potential of having a skin breakdown, I request, I request you guys to put an EPC cream. Have you ever seen an EPC cream? No? PC cream is it's a thick white uh, cream that does not allow inside water to come out and outside from outside the wetness to get inside the body. It's like a water protected cream that we apply on the bony prominences. You can also add silicone creams available in the uh, facility hospital, depends where you work, 
with we have some urea creams we have some silicon creams to promote skin healing only pay attention to allergies make sure he is not or she is not allergy to urea or to silicon if you are applying something to someone make sure please and please make sure that they are not allergic to that thing that you are giving them okay your role in wound care depends on your job description the client's condition and the provincial or territorial laws types of wounds wounds are described in many ways we have abrasions which is a partial thickness wound which we call scraping away or rubbing of the skin contusion that is a close wound that is blow to the body contusion is bruising incision open wound clean intentional cut into the skin with a sharp instrument which is when we say surgeries incisions are always surgical wounds and when we see this incision we also have to pay attention if the skin is aligned if the skin is getting smoother is getting closed if it is dehesion dehesion means they are moving away sometimes our clients they have abdominal surgery they just got their appendix removed they have so fat um too much fat what happens is uh, this is true life scenarios that have happened our clients or our residents got a surgery when they stitch them back when as a surgeon they stitch them back they stitch the skin with the fat tissue the person is not eating well is losing body fat there's a time when these wounds open because wound healing can happen between skin and skin when it's between skin and fat it opens up back there have been cases reported in uh, north america so just for your own self sometimes pay attention and look at what kind of wound it is and you see these are uh, incision wounds other wounds yes but incision wounds surgical wounds they should be aligned properly there should be no pus coming in if you see a discharge you report hey this discharge is it uh, purulent purulent means pus we don't say if it's a uh, sanguineous which is blood coming out sero sanguineous ha like blood and pus together so that's your reporting purulent sanguineous serosanguineous blood pus plus pus and blood both coming out from it. when you talk about wound when you look at the wound and you look at the incision what should come to my mind what are the surroundings looking like do they have a wound bed are they because i don't know whether you guys have seen some wounds are so bad you don't when you look at it you don't you can make it like where did this wound actually start from where is it starting and where is it ending does it have a um wound bed i don't know i can't see anything around the skin around the wound how does the skin look like does the skin look healthy other than the wound the area of the wound right think of those things i get a wound is my other area bruised is it 
warm is it cold if you ever know if your clients if your resident if your patient we put an iv in them if that iv is not working properly either it will it's called uh, interstitial and they go interstitial either it will be so warm to touch it will be red it will be burning or it will be so bloody cold and it's called infiltration pelvitis hot red um, infiltration cold your skin it starts really like there's no it, know, that's why we need to remove that tiny the ivy that ivy becomes a source of infection portal of entry so look when you talk about wound yes we are talking about wound abrasion we are talking about condition we are talking about incision but what about other than that the areas around this how does they how do they look do they look pink the skin is good pink the skin is attached the skin is cold warm what what what's happening so not only the wound but the area around it should be also examined how big is the wound when i talk about this abrasion how big is it where is it let's say you are reporting to a wound please 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 when you talk to someone or you report someone report, there's a wound on the right uh, ankle if i tell you it's on the uh, it's on the ankle which ankle could be there was one on the right ankle which got healed but there's now a new one on the left one so make sure you properly report it which side which place which area how big how does the wound look like it's not only that you look this is just a i know this is just a bookish way we say but be normal as a normal person you are telling me oh you know what uh, the patient has a bruise where arm okay if she doesn't ask you which arm report it properly there's a bruise a small bruise um maybe the size of a dime maybe a size of you can say uh, we do say i if i have to report i would say like that like a dollar 1 dollar um or it's more than that it's around on the right forearm the area otherwise looks good but uh, the wound is right now at an initial stage there's no there's no blood coming in there's no discharge but it looks that it it's scraped See, this is abrasion. Somebody got scraped. This. This is bruising. And these are incisions. See? The two skins, the, the scarring, if the scarring is not even, the healing will get delayed. Delayed or it might not get healed. Another thing, also please, if you see, it's not your job, but overall, I am trying to tell you, if you have um, a client and you're looking at it, quickly, you, you can count how many you have, how many the client has. If, you, if it's your regular client, because when you're cleaning, 
it might get open. You might be able to report how many it was by the end of two days, five days, six days, how many are left. If we do our job uh, diligently and do it on the right time right away, it will not cost us more time. It will not cost us more discomfort. Then the nurse will say, oh, you know what? This lady had um, five stitches. Uh, when you give shower, let me know how many are left because they are dissolving. Or can you change and check later on how many they have? This, These tasks get always delegated to you. Why not to check on the day when we had him? Why not to check when it gets removed, if the dressing is wet, soaked? Okay? What happened to the sides? Okay. Lacerations. Lacerations are open wounds. They are torn and uh, jagged edges. This laceration is always caused when your clients hit themselves with a table, when your clients hit themselves with bed. They don't have even edges. Incisions always will have even edges. Lacerations do not have have even edges. Penetrating wound, that's an open wound. It can be caused by a knife, a bullet, a rod, like that. Skin and underlying tissues are pierced. Superficial and deep penetrating caused by a knife or a bullet. When we talk about penetrating wounds, it is, it, it's a deeper wound, like a hole um, caused by a knife, bullet, rods, like that. Puncture wound is called a closed wound caused by a sharp object, attack, animal teeth, nails, etc. Minimum bleeding, prone to infection, treat quickly. If you, have, if you see um, a penetrating wound or a puncture wound, both need to get a tetanus shot right away. Where can we find which is the most common cause of a common example of puncture wound. People who get poked with needle. Sometimes you are working with your clients, you poke yourself, which is a very, very common uh, way how things happen. A very common example. This is laceration. You see, they are mostly caused by hitting bed, a chair, in facilities. Again. We won't be we won't get a puncture wound from hook. Our clients don't go, but can if you're working in a hospital, you can get with knife and things. Skin tears. Skin tear is very, very, very common. Your client was changing her bed. They have rough edges on their nails. You have sharp nails. They can get a skin tear. You, even you, even you are prone to uh, skin tears. If ever, <clears throat> let's say, uh, you are dealing with papers. No, sometimes it. Or uh, money, you get a skin tear from there. The sharp edges. The epidermis it separates from the underlying tissue. Hands, arms, lower legs are common sites for skin tears. It cause it's what causes it? Friction and shearing, rubbing, pulling or pressure on the skin, bumping a hand, arm, or leg on, on any hard surface, which is very common, holding the client's arm or leg too tight, Re when you are repositioning, moving, or transferring a client. Most of the time, they get these skin rips. Bathing, dressing, and other tasks, they get skin tears. 
pulling bottoms or zippers across fragile skin, they get skin tears. Removing um, tape, any kind of tape from the client's skin, they get skin tears. They get patches, paint patches, nitro patches, uh, nicotine patches, they get skin tears. Skin tears are painful. Skin tears are portal of entry for microbes. Again, from these skin tears, microbes can start getting in. Tell the supervisor at once you, uh, if you find a skin tear, bruise, bump, or scrape. Person at risk for skin tears, those who need moderate to complete help in moving. Those who have poor nutrition are very thin. Those who have poor hydration, those who have altered mental awareness, and older people. Anybody who doesn't have, who doesn't eat, drink well, is at a risk of skin breakdown. Careful and safe care uh, helps prevent skin tears and further injuries. Uh, sometimes they are brushing their hair. They are um, teeth, they that time are at a risk of skin tears. Because everywhere they have skin is very, very fragile. For them. Prevention and treatment of skin tears. Follow the care plan safety measures for moving, lifting, and repositioning. Keep client nails and your nails short or filed. This is very important. Do not wear rings that have edges, sharp edges. Gently transfer or position the client. Use a turning sheet, transfer sheet. Prevent friction during moving or positioning. Use reverse turbulence position. Always apply, always apply a moisturizer available from the facility if the client has not been provided from the family. But before you put those things on, you apply creams and all, make sure you have gloves on, please. Pressure injuries. A pressure injury is an injury caused by unrevealed pressure on the skin and or underlying tissue. It's also called as decubitus ulcers, bed sores, pressure ulcers or pressure sores. Which really occurs over a bony prominence called a pressure point. It is always caused on the pressure point, the bony prominences, uh, the neck, the shoulder, elbows, wrist, hip joint, bum, knees, ankles, heels. Heels are, that's why, offload the heels, please. Heels are a common sight as well. Bum and heels. Both are at always, always, always at a risk. Because when you're lying, think of it, when you're lying in the bed, your bum touches the uh, mattress and your heels touch the mattress. So we have bones there and these are large bones, heavy bones. They cause skin breakdown, if not reposition. So please, every time you uh, reposition them, move the pillow, reposition the pillow under the feet. To make sure that you prevent skin breakdown from uh, the feet. Cause of pressure ulcers, pressure, shading, friction are common causes. Risk factors include breaking the skin, poor circulation to an area, Moisture, dry, flaky skin, skin irritations caused by urine and feces. After you uh, change your uh, client, keep it as a habit of applying an EPC cream. EPC cream is different than a moisturizer cream. It is a triad cream that is water-based it does not allow water to come out of the skin and it does not allow the uh, outside moisture to get inside the skin 
Clients at risk of pressure ulcers, it includes clients who are confined to the bed or chair, requires moderate to complete help in moving, have loss of bowel or bladder control. It means if someone has loss of bowel or bladder control, they're considered to be incontinent. The word we use is incontinent. Have poor nutrition, have altered mental awareness, have problems sensing pain or pressure. There are people who, uh, especially diabetic people, they have lost the sense of pain or pressure. Diabetic neuropathy, having circulatory problems and are older, are obese, are very thin. If your client is uh, very obese or your client is very thin, again, at a risk of pressure also. Signs of pressure ulcers, your skin, as I mentioned, it can be pale or gray skin, warm, red in area. Pale if it's infiltrated, gray if it's getting necrotic, warm if it's, um, again, uh, felbitis. It's, all these are pressure ulcers, redden pressure ulcers. They might be complaining of pain, maybe burning, itching or tingling in the area. Some clients, they may not feel anything unusual. Look for the signs of poor blood flow to the area. We press the finger digits. What we do is we check capillary refill. We press it and it should come back after getting wiped. Same, we press their finger, uh, foot toes uh, digits. We press them and release them. Want to see it should be less than three seconds. Then it's, if your area is grayish, it means it's not getting enough blood. Even gray or blue. Some people have blue uh, sinus nose. It means they do not have enough oxygen reaching to their, heart, to their heart. That's a sign of heart issue. Always remember. Immediately notify supervisor of any sign of a pressure injury. Pressure, uh, uh, pressure usually occurs over bony, bony areas called pressure points. Pressure on the airs can be used by mattress when client in, is lying in the side position, friction from glasses or oxygen tube. Again, if ever it's when we put them on and they stick these, we stick tape on their face so that this tubing will stay like this, it causes. Better is Put a uh, small gauze first and then put the tubing. Then you can put a tape on it to make sure it's secured. If they are wearing glasses for a long time, just put a cotton ball, put this thing on, secure it. In obese people, pressure ulcers can occur in areas where skin has contact with skin. Between Abdominal folds. If your people are, if your uh, clients are heavy, and they have holes, uh, folds, sometimes under the breast area, they have pressure ulcers. It's their own skin flapping on it. Between, if they have too much big abdomen, uh, folds in the abdomen, one fold on the other fold can cause pressure ulcer. The legs, huge legs, between the two legs. Like uh, just close by to the groin area, uh, thighs, and under. I told you under the breast. For this kind of um, people, I would recommend if you're working in hospital, get an intra dry. It is always available uh, freely. If you're working in a residential home, um, you can always advocate because. That intra dry, it comes in a roll. You can cut according to the area that you really see is redden. You don't have to apply anything. That really does not allow moisture to uh, break the skin. It absorbs. Intra dry is mostly, you can say, that some of our Nike t-shirts, 
they're made of that intra dry matter. Even if you run the sweat, you don't sweat. It absorbs the sweat. Prevent preventing pressure injuries is much easier than healing them. I told you, once these pressure ulcers are there, it's difficult to heal them. When they get worse, that time it really becomes impossible. So it's better to prevent getting these ulcers. Again, best way, do not keep your clients wet. Reposition them. Keep the dry. Keep the skin dry. Apply EPC cream. Uh, offload the bony prominences using pillows. Uh, normally pillows. If not, then towels or sheets. Uh, between the skin folds uh, apply intra dry if not then apply again epcs please that's very very important the health team must develop a care plan for each person at risk the client at risk for pressure ulcers is placed on a surface that reduces or relieves pressure that's called a pressure mattress we always use a pressure mattress for them Prevention and treatment of pressure injuries. The doctor orders wound care products, drugs, treatment, special equipments uh, promoting healing. Protective devices are sometimes used to prevent and pressure uh, treat pressure ulcers and skin breakdown. That's called uh, special um, beds, bed cradles, and elbow protectors. We do have them. We always use them. M. This is the air mattress. The mattress, as I mentioned, these are not regular mattresses. We only put this plastic cover on it. That's it. Fitted sheet on it. We put them on. What it does is it blows it up and then uh, first it blows up, then goes off, then blows up. That's how it allows our client to get repositioned. We do not cover this kind of mattress. Again, just a simple bed, fitted sheet, that's it. We don't, don't, we never ever cover this. There's, there would be no purpose otherwise uh, to do, to keep a mattress like this. It blows up, then goes off, blows up, and then goes off. That's how it works. See? How they put it? Elbows, I told you. Protective devices, heel elevators. We do have uh, heel elevators. Our beds also have it. The worst come worse. If we don't have those veggie, that's called wedges. Those are wedges. If we don't have those wedges available, always use pillows. If you don't have extra pillows, always use blankets. Flotation pads, gel or fluid filled pads and cushions. Egg crates like mattress. It's like an egg crate mattress. Pillows, trochanter rolls and footboards. I told you these are used for protect. We always use them um, between the legs, heels, um, thighs uh, to protect our plants. This is called a wedge. This is used for offloading a client's feet. See, the heel does not touch the mattress. The heel and the heel does not touch each other. That's an air mattress, air chair, air mattress, mattress chair. Leg and foot ulcers. Some diseases affect blood flow to and fro, uh, flow from the legs and feet. Edema, I mentioned, I think yesterday or day before, hundred of time, but still yesterday. Swelling, which is caused by fluid collecting in the tissue. People with hypertension, high blood pressure do have 
uh, edema. People lying in the bed for a very, very long time have edema. A disease called anasarca means a generalized edema of body. We'll see people. God forbid, God forbid. If there are clients who have anasarca, they blow up with their whole body gets edema. They are so edematous that they blow up with it. It's, it's a disease that causes edema. Gangrene is caused by diabetes. A condition in which there's a death of a tissue. Once there's a gangrene, if this gangrene tissue gets into infection, that necrotic tissue, that dead tissue needs to be cut off. Infection and gangrene can result from an open wound at poor circulation. Gangrenes are always caused in diabetes. It's called a diabetic foot, diabetic toe. The toe, big toe, um, is always removed. Gangrenes are always, always. The most common site for a gangrene is foot. And it is a condition that happens in uh, people with diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes, not diabetes, regular diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes. Leg and foot ulcers, we got talking about circulatory uh, ulcers, vascular ulcers are open wounds on the leg, uh, lower legs and feet. They're caused by decreased blood flow through the arteries and veins. People with diseases affecting blood vessels are at risk. If a person is having is aged and has uh, arteriosclerosis or uh, like thickening thickening of blood and thinning of arteries. Think of it. I have an artery which is this big. Can blood flow is more blood can flow? Yes. If my blood is thin, can it flow easily? Yes. But now my arteries are thin, very small, and my blood is thick. Can it move easily? No. Again, which is called cholesterol problems, arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis, th thinning of um, arteries and thickening of blood, which is commonly caused due to cholesterol. People will have vascular ulcers. These wounds are painful and difficult to heal. These wounds are very, very difficult. Again, healing is delayed. Normal healing delayed. Aging is there. Uh, underlying causes of disease is here. And it can be poor uh, mobility is decreased. If mobility is decreased, again, repositioned. If not reposition, it's impossible to heal. Venous ulcers, stasis ulcers, they are open wounds on the lower legs or feet caused by poor blood return to the veins. If it's between veins, it's called venous. If it's artery, it's called arterial. It can develop when the valves in the legs do not close well. Every, all our veins have valves. Once the valves close, then the blood flows to other organs. If the blood, if the way, way, valves do not close, they cannot push blood to other organs. Once it reaches our stomach, our stomach veins have valves, they close, it keeps on going down. Any problem in one of the valves will cause these ulcers. Veins cannot pump bl um, blood back to the heart in a normal way. Blood and fluid collects in the leg and feet. Again, this is called edema. Pitting edema can occur. When you press on their, when you press on their skin, normally our skin right away plumps back. If you press on them, it will become like a, it will go down and slowly, 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 slowly. It takes time for them. This is called pitting edema. One, when you say pitting edema, you press and your finger, the uh, pressure, the, the way you pressure the finger, 
it stays there. That's pitting edema. And normal edema is when you look at the client and you see it's swole. That's how you differentiate between edema and pitting edema. And I said, I need to reposition a lot. <laughs> Appearance of venous ulcers, edema in a tissue, gives swollen appearance. Skin may appear shiny and stretched. Yes. Whenever there is pitting edema, whenever there is edema, the skin looks so shiny because there is water in it. Walking may be painful and difficult. Venous ulcers may sweep fluid. Healing is slow. Infection is the greatest risk. If edema lasts for a long period of time, skin will change its appearance and texture. It will become dry, brown, leathery, and hard. Itching is common. You will also see when we talk about this edema, if the a client has, when they put the socks on, the marks of the socks are left behind. Yes, Auntie Jo? She said, I'm just going to come. Thank you. Itching is common. Causes of venous ulcers, the heel and the inner aspect of ankles are common sites for venous ulcers. They can occur from skin injuries, from scratching. They can occur without trauma. Venous ulcers are painful and make walking difficult. Again, risk of infection. Prevention and treatment of uh, venous ulcers. Follow the client's care plan to prevent skin breakdowns, prevent injury, handle, move, transfer the client carefully and gently. Clients at risk need professional foot care. The doctor may order drugs for infection and to decrease swelling. When you see somebody who has swelling, your client will be on water pills, furosemide pills. They will have, we will have to give them um, medication to make sure that client's water comes out. Another thing, when you see people with this kind of a scenario, you will have to daily weigh them. That's your, that will come up to you. I know this is not, you have to uh, set a care plan, but if you see someone who is having edema and is on uh, medication, water pills, they always require uh, daily weight. Otherwise, how we will come to know that is he losing water? Is the edema getting down? With an eye, we cannot do it. The best way to check without making assumptions is take daily weight at the same time using same weighing machine. Do you understand what I say? It's always safe to use it like that. And ulcers, um, I, I think we will be talking about. Maybe there are other um, slides. Um, there are, I told you, mouth ulcers are also very, very, very common. Lack of nutrients causes mouth ulcers. If you get sick, if you see you get flu, you might get an ulcer. If you drink hot beverages, you might get ulcers, mouth ulcers. <clears throat> Prevention and treatment of venous ulcers, medication, medicated bandages and other wound care products are often ordered. Devices used for pressure ulcers are often ordered. Those are, the doctor, I'll talk about this. This is very, very important. The doctor may order elastic stockings or um, elastic bandages. Okay. Now, very important thing that is in your scope, that is for you. When we see people who have um, these uh, venous ulcers or arterial ulcers. We tried for them. These are called elastic stockings, compression stockings, exact 
actual name is compression stockings. We don't say elastic stockings, we say compression stockings. These compression stockings is your job to do and how you do it. How do I know what to do? You have to measure the width of the calf muscle. Then you check there are all the size of these compression stockings. You would see which one you will take. It's already pre-packed, pre but you have to check the width. It is according to the width. It says the width and height. You have to use that compression stocking. When you are putting the compression stockings, make sure you put it at the daytime and you remove it at night, which is very, very important. When you put it on, it should be rolled first and then swiped. When you uh, take it out, it has a way. Roll it and take it out. Why? Because if your client is at a risk of embolus, has fat uh, molecules inside the blood, if ever you do not remove it properly or you do not put them properly, that fat molecule, which is called embolus or thrombi, can reach to the client's heart. Because it travels with blood. That's why people are sometimes, suddenly they are so good, they just walk and they pass up, they die. If there's a fracture and the bone is broken, again, there's this, they are at a risk. Why are bones, they have long bones especially, they have fat inside, these fat molecules can travel. So when you are using these compression stockings, very mindful when, what time, and how to put and when to take out. If your client is very heavy, you cannot put or has uh, skin infections, cellulitis, you cannot put compression stockings on them. You have compression pads, you put them on. These are flaps, you put them on that has a tube that gets connected to a monitor and then it starts to work. It blows up, goes down, blows up, goes down. That's how it kind of massages the legs and the patient is able to have good circulation. Okay? Is it the right time to take a break? Let's get back. We'll get back at 11.45. How is it? Okay. That's okay. And uh, uh, just one more thing. Where okay. can I go and get that uh, standard first aid with the CPR level C? Yes, yes, yes. Where, which institution? Or it's like anyone recommended by the college? Or near no, the college? no. You can, you can get it. Just check, just check which is the, those who don't charge you. Even if you, I, I'll check. I, I do have some from the hospitals. I'll give you. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Anything else? And one more thing, like uh, I was going to this uh, uh, workbook mm -hmm. and uh, how will I get to know like uh, whatever answers I do, whether they're true. Use, like, use the pencil. Use a pencil. Once okay. the workbook is done, once the days are uh, our chapters are completed, we will go through these uh, one by one. And that's why I said, everybody, please finish your workbook. And I will have to check on, but I don't want to mark them wrong on your books, which is going to get your marks off. So we will be discussing them in the end. But do not... Keep them that you will not be able to finish the whole work. We are already at chapter 22. Yep. So let's do it slowly, slowly, and then we'll discuss those things. The points that you're not pretty sure about are clear. You can always ask the next day, the day you do that. Or encircle it, we can discuss. Okay? Anything else? No? Let's get back at 11.45. Okay? Have a wonderful break, everyone.
Everybody back? So here we got five minutes late. Share the screen. Okay. Are you able to see the slide back again? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when we talk about this, I told you with compression stockings, we call them SCD. Compression stockings are SCD. We put them. There are two types. Dead stockings that are like uh, socks but they are open from two edges. You pull them up, uh, one, you can put the thumb in and pull it up, roll them again, roll them out. If ever those, uh, some people, they have problems of cellulitis uh, or they are very huge obese, we cannot put those dead stockings on. This is called dead stockings, elastic stocking. We put SCDs on them again. These are a type of compression stocking, but they are, but they are uh, what we say, electrically manu uh, manipulated. Once you plug in on that side, once you plug in on your bed, you put the monitor on the bed. It's a small monitor. Start. It will go boom. It will make the leg, 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 leg. It it becomes like a leg. It blows up, then goes down. Blows up, goes down. That's when we use these. These are all used for people who are lying in a bed for a long time and who are at a risk of these ulcers. Okay. Arterial ulcers are open wounds on the lower legs or feet caused by poor arterial flow. The parent says affected leg or foot may be cool. Appears gray or blue or shiny. Bluish is always anything that seems to be blue uh, to gray color. It means that uh, blood is not circulating in that. It's not receiving enough blood. It may be painful during rest, usually worse at night. And the sites, they are found between the toes, on top of the toes, and on outer side of the ankles. Heels are also common sites. Arterial yeah. ulcers, they're caused by the disease or injuries that decrease arterial blood flow to legs and feet. Smoking is a risk factor. Hypertension is a risk factor. Diabetes is a risk factor. For arterial ulcers, people who have uh, diabetes, who, are hyper, uh, who suffer from hypertension and who uh, are smokers they are at risk because when somebody smokes, the blood becomes more thick, 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 thick. And uh, the cells, they break down faster than the normal. That's called pancytopenia. People uh, have those kind of disease, that syndrome. And that's why they are at a risk of ulcers. In diabetes, they do. there's no healing. In hypertension, again, our um, heart valves are affected just because of the heart valves getting affected we do get uh, at a risk of arterial ulcers this is what I was saying look at the bed look at the edges see yeah. it is a deep deep wound wait so that happened because they were smoking uh, smoking diabetes this is a diabetic ulcer Smoking, diabetes, it can be. And then uh, if you don't reposition this site, it will keep on. This is, this becomes, it's a very deep wound. If you don't treat this wound, the next would be, uh, it will affect the bone. That's their bone, right? Yeah. And if uh, the infection goes in bone, it's, it's called, uh, it can be the, this whole bone can be at a risk of um, infection, osteomyelitis. If this wound is not healed, you have to cut the foot. Think of it. See, is repositioning important? Is offloading important? 
Is putting a pillow underneath important? Yes. Look at the surroundings or the, you have to see. That's why I said when it comes to the wound, this is called wound bed. The thing that you see here around, this is called wound bed. Okay? Leg and wound ulcers. The treatment, the doctor treats the disease causing uh, the ulcer. The doctor orders drugs and wound care. A wound, for such kind of a wound, a wound care nurse will come and see. A walking and exercise program, just to uh, make sure that blood reaches to this uh, foot. Professional foot care comes in. You should provide. You should never provide foot care to your clients with arterial um, injuries. People who have arterial injuries, we should not be providing foot care to them, unless it's specified what kind it should be given to the clients. Otherwise, don't. The healing process has three phases. The first phase is very important, which is called an inflammatory phase, which lasts long for three days. Bleeding will stop, a scab is formed around the wound, blood supply increases, bringing nutrients, healing substances to the area. Redness, redness, swallowing, swelling, heat, warmth may be present and it may have some loss of function or thing. So when you see such kind of wounds, you press the areas and you ask them, do you feel any numbness? Do you feel my pressure in? Is it tingling? They will let you know. Then the second phase that we have is the proliferative phase, which lasts from three days to 21 days, where the tissue cells, they multiply to repair the wound. The last stage is maturation phase from 21 days to one to two years of injury. Seriously, I told you, these kind of uh, ulcers that you call as diabetic foot ulcers are, and this is one of the common uh, diabetic foot ulcer in the heel. Then it's it's terrible. It gets worsened, and a time comes they get amputated if it's not being treated properly. If it's not being taken care. Not only medications work on it; other things have to be working on it. If you don't. Uh, clean the wound properly, if it's not being covered properly, if the circulation is not there, if it's not being offloaded, if the disease is not controlled, it's not going to heal. Sometimes they have a scab. I had a, I had to see a patient in Karcher House. Yes. I had a patient, everything was done. She was all fine. Uh, she had a wound, the same kind of wound. She had a good scab on it. While I was preparing some meds and stuff for her, she hit it with the bed, bed edge of the bed. The scab came off. It was bleeding like her. It took so long for me, I remember that uh, uh, those were very early days when I used to work there as an LPN. I had to apply so many times a dressing on it. So please remember, these are where you always protect, protect these. And when you see such kind of, if there's a dressing, apply some gauze over it so that it remains protected, dry. Healing occurs in three ways. Primary intention, uh, first intention, primary closure, wounds, wound edges are brought together to close the wound. I told you, a wound can only close when the two edges are brought together. Wound is closed using sutures, staples, clips, or adhesive strips. What we use, put, put, to get them together at one place to get attached we might 
use sutures. We might use staples. We might use, um, use clips on them uh, or adhesive uh, strips. Secondary intention. A second intention, wounds are clean and dead tissue is removed. Uh, the wound that we see here is not much close to this. It was not a secondary, it was a tertiary wound. This one is a wound where you have to clean the scab. We always use, first we wash the wound. We always go from inner to out, not from outer to in. Wound edges are not brought together. Because these don't have a bed, bed, wound bed, not the sleeping bed. Wound bed means edges. Secondary wounds do not have a proper um, wound bed. That's why they cannot be brought together. They're irregular. Scars are formed and then you treat the infection. Then the three. It's a delayed intention. It's a third intention. The wound is left open. It closed later. Some wounds, we need to keep them open for a very, very long time. No matter what we do, it's not healing. We have to leave it for air drying. So those are tertiary wounds. Okay. Any question at this point? You would see there's uh, another thing that we have are uh, um, scars. It is completely E-S-E-H-A-R. If you see the wound, the bone is seen through, seen through. You can feel the bone. It goes so deep. Okay. Complications of wound. Many factors affect healing and increase the risk of complications. The type of wound, the client's age, general health and lifestyle, the circulation, the nutrition, immune system changes, and medications. So for the wound to heal, we have to look into what kind of heal a wound it is. How deep the wound is. Who the client is. What kind of disease the client has. What caused the wound. Is this person having a proper circulation to this wound? Does he eat well? Does he drink well? Is he immunocompromised? If he's immunocompromised, the wound healing will be delayed forever. Because our body has to create an immune state. It has to create these neutrophils uh, to get there. When you're immunocompromised, it will not create the fighting material, the white blood cells. The power to heal, if you don't have that, how will you heal it? And then last, medications. Another thing that I want to tell you is when you're dealing with wounds, when you're dealing with wound healing, if you're touching any wound in your lifetime, always ask the nurse to first give them some medication. Do not touch the wounds um, which are secondary and tertiary without giving medication. Think of yourself. If you, God forbid, see such a wound, would you be in a state where you will be compliant with your um, person? No. There will be no compliance. Even when you're changing their clothes, they will not be compliant because it's painful. You always need to ask, hey, can he get some? He, he's asking for something for pain. Give them some medication. Am I clear? Factors that affect healing and increase the risk of complication is the client's age. The more the elderly, the more the risk of not getting healed. Client's health, the underlying uh, diseases, nutritional status and lifestyle. How he, how much is he um, eating, drinking well, and is he a total, a one person, two person assist or a standby? That's lifestyle. Location and type of wound, where the wound is. If it's a buttock, if it's a wound in the buttock, uh, especially between the butt cheeks, 
healing will be impossible. Reason? They poo. They pee. They sit on it. No matter on bed or on chair. Think of it. It takes forever to heal that thing. So do not try to avoid getting pressure ulcers in the buttocks for your clients. Other medical conditions, if they have, just as I said, immunocompromise, diabetes, hypertension, psoriasis, cellulitis, all this. If their kidney function is not good, even then, They are on a, a certain medication. If your client is on uh, warfarin, it will create healing, which will be like there will be no healing process. Very less. Okay. Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is excessive loss of blood in a short period of time. It may be internal or external. Internal cannot be seen. Bleeding occurs into tissues and body cavities. Hematoma, collection of blood under the skin. When does this hematoma occur? When you hit something very hard. You see a bum in and it's filled with blood. Bruising is not hematoma. <laughs> Bruising means blue color. Skin is flat. But with hematoma, hematoma, it will look like a bulge and this is Inside, it is blue. It is same blue, but it's buzzed because there's blood in it. Tissues appear swollen, reddish blue or gray color. Skin and symptoms of, signs and symptoms of internal bleeding. Shock. If somebody is bleeding inside, it will, patient will go in shock. Vomiting blood. He, again, coughing up blood, loss of, Consciousness. Vomiting blood or uh, coughing up blood is called hematomesis. Heme means blood. Emesis means vomit. Blood, vomit is hematomesis. Yes. If you see somebody is bleeding inside, the biggest risk is to go in shock. Septic shock. Because there's loss of blood. Again, the uh, blood carries nutrients. It carries it to every organ. It does not reach. Done. External bleeding, it is visibly seen. It can be, it, it can be seen easily. Uh, if there's a dressing, dressing would be soaked. It might be external um, bleeding. Patient is uh, not only women, but men can have blood in their pee. If they have uh, prostate, benign prostate uh, cancer, BPH, they can have, uh, they pee blood instead of pee. So you, uh, that time we do um, a procedure, we put a foley, we run fluid inside their bladder, wash their bladder with all the blood. That's external bleeding. Somebody got hit, it's external bleeding. There are many sources of seeing external bleeding. Shock. Shock results when there is not enough blood supply to the organs and tissues. Signs and symptoms. Low or falling blood pressure. Rapid or weak pulse. Rapid respirations. Being rapid respiration is called tachy, tachycardia. If you hear when you're working, your client is tacky. Can you please keep an eye on him? It means she or he has fast, rapid pulse. It will be like when you put a hand here or on her on their chest while chaining, you will see it's like that's called tacky. They can be cold, moist, pale, or grayish skin. Client is restless and may complain of thirst. Confusion and loss of consciousness eventually occurs. Hemorrhage and shock are emergencies. Follow the standard practices when in contact with blood. Again, 
when you are dealing with blood, you might not be able to touch blood products unless, unless touch blood product does not mean bringing it for them. You do not touch blood products in the terms of you don't install, you don't check, you don't put the button on for them, all that thing. Infection, infection can occur anytime, signs and symptoms. Wound is tender to touch, may have drainage, client may have a fever. Again, drainage can be virulent, pus. You would see the color, odor, amount. When you say she has infection and there's a drainage, how much? It will come into your mind. How much? What does it look like? What color? Does it have an order? So smell, amount, color, you have to keep that thing in mind. When you say there is drainage. He sends an evasion. Our surgical emergencies. I have told you there have been a lot and a lot of cases when there was the uh, some pregnancy cases had it some of the cases when they had those um, what is it called uh, lung transplants or uh, I have we have heard a lot about it and not only heard we have seen personally dealt with a lot of dehiscent cases. Dehiscence is the separation of wound layers because when they uh, stitch them, suture them, it's one side fat, one side skin. When the skin, uh, when the fat, it starts to th thin, become thin, it gets open. And fat and skin, they cannot really like get uh, along with each other. Eversation is the separation of wound along with the protrusion and abdominal. This is what I told you. Sometimes then when they get surgery, open heart surgeries, when they have appendicitis, they remove uh, their appendix or they have the colon problems, they open. When they close, their, it's the deep, deep layers. Sometimes the pressure is too bad in their body. Sometimes it's not been sutured properly or there are underlying diseases that does not allow it to heal properly. It just opens up. Their organs start to come out. It is a medical emergency. What you do, you just get a pad. There are long abdominal pads in the hospital. Your job is just to put a pad in front of that organ and let them till they get into trauma. Coughing, vomiting, and abdominal distension place stress on the wound. A, think about it. Somebody has an open wound, uh, the organs coming out, conversation um, or dehiscence, and they have to cough. What will happen? It will again cause pressure and it will allow it to come out more and more. Sterile dressing saturated with sterile uh, saline is placed over the wound. Always when we have, we use, they're called pinkies. They're pink bottles. We have saline in big bottles as well. And we have saline in small bottles called pinkies. We always flush them and then use the sterile saline pads on them. Wound appearance, doctors and nurses observe the wound and its drainage. You need to make certain observations when assisting in the wound. Report and record your uh, observations according to the agency policy. The amount and type of wound drainage. The wound size. What the size is. Size of a dime. A size of a penny. A size of a dollar. Or whatever it looks like to you. Location. Bleeding. How much. Is there any infection? You have to say. Acute care setting make care for clients with wounds under bulky dressings. Acute care again means hospital setting. 
Clients may have blood seeping through freshly applied cast or dressing. In hospitals, when we apply fresh dressing or fresh cast on them, we often see uh, it soaked with blood. That time, we do not remember the thumb rule. You never, never, never remove the previous one. We always reinforce. Reinforce means you cover it with on top of it with a new one. Because if you throw that first one, the one, your nurse, your doctor, your wound clinician will not be able to know what the first dressing looked like. And when you remove and apply another one, it will rip off again some skin. Let it settle down. So that's why the thumb rule is to saturate. If it's saturated, reinforce with more uh, pad or with more gauze. Okay. Observe the client for signs of blood loss, such as low blood pressure and high blood pressure. If your client has low or high blood pressure, it means he's going for a septic shock. Along with high fever, he's having a heavy blood loss, he's going for a septic blood shock, se uh, sepsis. Remember, the signs of sepsis is either high blood pressure, low blood pressure, high fever, low fever. Observe the wound area and report all the observations. Again, look at this uh, wound bed. Look at the wound uh, um, sides. Look at the sur uh, surroundings of the wound, the color of the area around the wound. Uh, look at the size, drainage, if there is, how much, if mm, an order, what kind of smell it is. You have to look into all those things. Wound drainage is observed and measured. Major type of wound drainage are serous drainage, I told you, clear watery drainage, sanguineous drainage, bloody drainage, serosanguineous, thin watery drainage with blood, purulent means thick green, yellow or brown drainage, which is called pus. It also has uh, odor. Serous also has an odor. Blood has its own smell. So this is. This, and this one, this is serosanguineous drainage. This one is a purulent because this is pus. This is brown drainage. Wound drainage. Drainage must leave the uh, wound in order for healing to occur. When large wound amounts of drainage are expected, the doctor will insert a drain. If there is sometimes <clears throat> there is not externally but there's an internal wound and there's too much of uh, drainage coming out. We see our client is not able to breathe properly. She is short of breath. We ask them to go for a CT for an X-ray. We find various kinds of, we see in the X-ray and we see in the CT that there's drainage. So what do we do? We insert a drainage in there. A tube, it's called a JPG drainage or a havoc. It's like, um, you know, the mixers that we have, uh, chopping mixers, it's kind of that. And we it has a tube, the tube we have uh, this roller. You start the roller, you control the roller, fast or slow, it starts to drain out. That's called JPG. The havoc is, it's like, a, uh, trumpet, you press it and leave it. With that pressure, slowly, slowly it blows up and it takes something. So those are kind of drainages that we use, uh, drains that we use. A Penrose drain is a rubber tube that drains into the dressing. There's one more that we call as a pen Penrose drain. Uh, it opens the drain, microbes can enter the drain and won't. So make sure you wipe the skin first with uh, these alcohol and then iodide wipes. Closed drainage system prevents microbes from entering the wound. A drain is placed in the wound and is attached to a suction so that it will keep on taking. Drainage is measured in two ways, notifying the number 
and size of drainage with the drain. The amount and kind of drainage on each dressing is notified. Measuring the amount of drainage in con uh, is in the collection container if close is used. Two types of drainage that we are talking about. One, we say the uh, number. If you have a drainage, you would say how many mils, 100 mils, 150 mils. Or, as I mentioned, a size of a dime, a size of a penny, a size of a dollar. That's the second type of, second way we notify the size. Dressings, wound dressings have, be, have the following function. It protects wounds from injury and microbes. It absorbs the drainage. It removes the dead tissue. It promotes comfort. It covers unsightly uh, wounds. It, prov uh, it provides a moist environment for wound healing. Apply pressure to help control bleeding. If you ever have gone for a lab test, once they draw blood, they tell you to put a pressure for a while, close your arm so that pressure stops blood. So always remember what a dressing can do. It secures, it does not allow the outside microbes to get in there. It does not allow it to get even extra dry, scaling. It also helps the material, the dressing that we use has that material uh, inside that will remove the dead uh, tissues that can slightly help wound healing with some medicate. Th these are medicated dressings. Some can be gel-based, some can be foam-based, some are like mesh and they already have a liquid in it and some are dry dressings. Those dry dressings are used for wounds that have too much pus that absorbs it. Sterile dressings. Dressing type and uh, size depends on many factors. The type of wound, again, the wound size and location where it is, amount of drainage, drainage, uh, presence or absence of infection. If you see, how we can see if your client has, if the client is uh, having a wound and started to have an infection, you. Uh, fever, you would say the client it has infection. If you see that the client is now uh, warm, has the, the area is warm, it can be that it's because of uh, infection. The dressing function, how the dressing functions, the frequency of dressing changes, how often the frequency is it. Normally what we do is we have we have dressings. We can say, hey, dressing needs to be changed every other day or PRN. What does it mean? Or PRN? It means just that if it gets wet, because of the location where it is, it can get wet. If it's in the bum, if it's on the leg, if it's on the foot. So that's the other thing that we have. The physician and the nurse choose the best type of dressing for each room. Type of dressing. Dressings are described by the material used and the uh, application method. The following dressings are common. Gauze. It comes in squares, rectangles, pads, and rolls. Non-adherent gauze. A gauze dressing with a non-stick surface. Vapor uh, permeable transparent adhesive film. It allows the wound ob uh, observation, but does not allow the fluid and microbes to enter. When you have um, an IV inserted, we have this paper uh, permeable transparent uh, adhesive form. What we can see through it, uh, we can see the uh, needle inside, we can see the area in inside that, but at the same time, it does not allow the microbes to enter. Some dressings contain special agents to promote wound healing. As I mentioned, they have gel. They are gel-based. Um, they have this uh, not only gel, but they are dry. Depends on what kind of dressing you are using. Securing dressings, microbes can enter the wound and drainage can escape. If dressing is dislodged, 
Tape is used to secure dressing. Adhesive tape sticks well on the skin. Paper and elastic tapes usually do not cause allergic reactions. Um, but some people are even allergic to tapes, any kind of tape. So be careful about that. Elastic tape allows movement of the body parts. If it's an elastic tape, it allows the body to be moved. Uh, it allows the finger to be moved. But if that there's another kind of tape, which is pink in color, which is such, it's so sticky and so hard. If you apply it, it won't allow you to move your fingers or any other organ. Tape comes in different sizes. Tape is applied to the top, middle, and bottom part of the dressing. Picture frame confirmation. Configuration, sorry. The tape extends several centimeters beyond each side of the dressing. It is not applied to encircle the entire body part. Now, securing dressings. You may assist the nurse with a dressing change. Some agencies let you apply a simple dry non-sterile dressing to the wound, which is called a MEPOR. The one that you guys can apply is a MEPOR. Always check your agency policy in regards to dressing change and your role in as a support worker. Some might not allow, some might allow, so you have to look into the policy. They don't have any pictures, which is not a good one. Let me see if your book has some. Manji. Guys, if you see your book, it tells us about we did talk about this one, Common Causes of Skin Breakdown, which is on page 482. Age-related changes, skin dryness, fragile and weak capillaries, general thinning of the skin, loss of fatty layers under the skin, as I mentioned, decreased sensation to touch, heat and cold, decreased mobility, sitting in a chair or lying in a bed most of the time, all day, Persistent diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and blood pressure. Diseases that decrease circulation, which is arteriosclerosis or, or arteriosclerosis. Poor nutrition, poor hydration. Incontinence. Moisture in dark areas of the body. I told you, bacteria love to grow in moist, dark areas. Pressure on bony parts. Poor care, fingernails or toenails. Friction from moving in the bed, up in the bed, turning on the sides. That is common cause of skin breakdown. Then box 22.2 says about types of wounds, which is again a very nice, nice thing. It tells us about intentional wounds that are created from treatment. For example, surgical incisions as well as sterile when you puncture, that is vein punctures, when you put in IV vein, IV starts, intravenous therapies, collecting blood, uh, giving away, not only when you're doing antibiotics, IV antibiotics, that one. Uninten unintentional wounds, they result from trauma, example, fall, vehicle accidents, gunshots and stabbings. Open wounds and closed wounds. It says an open wound is a break in the skin or mucous membrane. Intentional and most unintentional wounds are open. Closed injury to the skin without breaking the skin. For example, bruising, twists and sprains. Always remember this. Closed wound is a bruise, twist or a sprain. Could be in your exam you might get this. Clean wound are not infected. It means there are no microbes uh, entering into the wound. Clean wound, closed wounds are an intentional wounds created under surgically aseptic condition. A means without. Without any infections are usually clean because urinary, respiratory, digestive systems are not entered. They are at a re reduced risk of infections. Clean contaminated, 
results from surgical entry. You use sterile uh, technique for urinary, reproductive, or digestive. How? If you in urinary tract, you might use a Foley catheter, a supraprobic uh, catheter uh, for reproductive. You can uh, for reproductive tubings for digestive. You can use colostomies, ileostomies, uh, NG tubes Ooh. from nose. That can also be those. Are, it's talking about mm -hmm. those procedures. Incisions, an open wound with clean, straight edge. Laceration, an open wound with a torn tissue. No uh, edges are the same. Penetrating wounds, again, superficially, an open wound, which is in the upper skin layer to a deepest position of the blood and it can be like a bullet wound entering the body, puncture wound, a closed wound which is typically sharp pointed object, tracks like a pin, pin would be an injection, animal teeth or a nail. This one is nice, these ones are, chronic wounds will be there forever, they will never get fixed. Chronic wounds are mostly diabetic wounds. Please remember those things. It shows various organs uh, mm -hmm. on twenty page 2487. How the back of the head, how the shoulder blade, how the elbow, sacrum and heels are at a risk. And another thing, the guidelines for preventing uh, um, the skin tears is please promote fluid intake unless the client is unless the client or the patient or the resident is on uh, is on a uh, fluid restriction otherwise please and please elderly they do not drink enough water push i push fluids pure fluids give them juice give them water give them all those things use pillow ensure bed rails again uh, ensure the head is up, feet are elevated from the bed and uh, also uh, with pillows. Mm. Blistering. Look for blistering. Look for kind of. See, 488, this is the wound that we were talking about. This is a high risk wound. This is a butt cheek wound. If you guys have your book in front, 488 and 489 has a butt cheek wound. This is a common wound that you will be dealing with. And when they poop, imagine how it looks. How much can go there if you don't clean them up right away, if they are wet, if they are not repositioned. What would be happening to this skin? It's so painful, they scream as soon as you touch them. This wound needs to be uh, have epc cream all the time we apply you don't need an order for epc you have it all the time in whatever facility you work you will have it please grab one when you see it starts with in uh, on page 489 the first picture that you see is light red picture it starts with like that then it becomes like a scratch. Then it becomes like the picture D. Then it becomes stage four ulcer. Sometimes they also get it from the diaper that we put on, the brief that we put on for them. Now, is it similar to piles or different? No, no, no. Piles is, piles are, uh, the other name for piles is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are, mm. in the anus, it is like a skin fold, a swollen skin fold. Piles means when there is accumulation of blood. Mm. That's why when you poo, you see blood coming in. This is the skin the first, second, third, fourth skin has seven layers. 
these layers go off, the superficial layer goes and off, the epidermis, dermis, everything. And eventually you see uh, bones if you don't pay attention to it. That's, you will see that in, on page 490, there is a Braden scale. Braden scale sheet, this is what we use everywhere. This tells us about, it does not, it actually is the same, but not same, same, because the side one is at the bottom and there's a number. So how do we do it? If your patient is on uh, bed rest, in the activities um, uh, corner, you will write one. Then if he eats, is uh, the second should be eating. Then you see uh, nutrition. Poorly nutrient, two, two. Then you see uh, the third one would be incontinence, wetness. Uh, you would put, a if the number is higher, you would see he's safe. If the number is low, they are at high risk to medium risk. You will see that chart. We do have it in uh, the lab. We'll show you guys. This is the Braden scale. And, the, and at the back of the Braden scale is a picture of a guy sitting and standing. It is having a lot of dots showing what bony prominences, which are the bony prominences. Have you checked those things? Are there any redness? So you put check mark on whatever you see. Mucous membranes, mouth mucous membranes. Next, skin, arms. You put a tick or no based on what it is. And it says others. Others means if he has a poly, if he has a colostomy, if he has an ileostomy, if he has any drain. Okay. The picture 491 is a very good picture. This is how you put pillows between their legs. And then you also put this. This is what I tell you all the time. You put pillows. If you don't have a pillow, you put a blanket or you put a rolled towel just, in, just to save their skin breakdown. And at the same time, and it also relieves pressure on other organs. This is, we see pictures. And that is a diabetic foot ulcer on 494, the top one. This is necrosis. Necrosis means dead skin, dead tissue, dead. This is a necrotic tissue. A gangrene. The other name for this is gangrene. If this gangrene um, would start to spread, you will have to cut it. Otherwise, the toe falls, the heel will fall off itself. Sometimes the most common is toe also. The toes, the finger toes, they fall off. Always remember, pitting edema and edema. The difference between the two is when you see swollen uh, feet, lower legs, arms, you say this is edema. When you press the uh, lower leg and your finger goes in and there's kind of a bump, that go beca it becomes like a bump and then it slowly comes back. We say it's pitting edema plus one, plus two, plus three, how much your finger goes in. Like when you put the pressure, how much impression of your thumb or your finger will be on the skin. The other area looks oh. fine. And then when it is pitting edema, it will be shiny. The skin will be shiny. Am I clear? What do we have? There's another wound on 497. And you see, okay, wound, newly wound of if somebody gets a colostomy, a someone has ileostomy, which is newly, newly made, the skin should look pink. If it's red, it's called beefy red skin that colostomy, then 
colostomy is like the skin is being taken out and poop starts to come out in a bag. If that stoma, it's called a stoma, the skin that we have there out is called stoma. If this stoma is swollen, you have to look, that's also a wound. I don't know why they haven't mentioned a lot of things. This is also a wound. On top of it, when you see it is red, 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 called beefy red, it means there's an infection. You also look around uh, the stoma, how big the stoma is. You cut the size of the colostomy according to the stoma. So you have to make sure why I'm telling you the hissens. Remember, if it opens up, organs start to come out. Okay. Uh, Wound, uh, wounds under cast and dressings. When you put a uh, cast, when you put a cast on it, you have to make sure that the skin is pink. It's not blue. You have to press the fingers or wherever the cast has been put on the uh, skin. When you press it, it comes back right away. In it, it's it's not blue. It's not warm. It's not too cold because. That means there's no circle and you press it, they should feel it. There's no loss of sensation. So please make sure that you pay attention to all these. Mm. There's a uh, drain on 499. Hemovac also, as I mentioned, if you see 499, the top picture 22.18, it's a Hemovac. You press it, it has a spring, you open it, it would come up and it will start to fill up. This is a JPG drain. The bottom one. The plastic drain. This is a good book. Really. Look at the the one on page 504 is the clear uh, dressing that we apply. This clear dressing we also apply at the time of inserting an IV so that we can see underneath how the IV looks like. Okay? And for safety reason, please and please, again, I am telling you, when you move your clients, ask if they have any pain. If they tell you they have pain, go to your nurse, let her know she has pain, then move the patient. If your client is in pain, it will be hard for you to do your job. It will be hard. They will not be able to roll perfectly. They will not be able to uh, comply, uh, be compliant with you. Yeah, it's almost done, Auntie Jo. I'm just coming. Yes. Five minutes. Sure. Am I clear? That thing, pain, pain medications, bed at the lowest position, and call bell. Please. Please, please pay attention to that. Because this is basic. Okay? Look for your safety as well. Don't think that it's just that you will be helping your client. You neglect yourself. No. Respect everybody. Respect yourself also. Prevent yourself from being burned out. Take proper precautions. Use proper PPEs. Make sure you wash your hands. Properly, you use sanitizers. Keep an eye on those things. You use mask, gloves. No matter what happens. No, not even clean gloves. When you are in the hallway of any workplace, you do not put gloves on. 
whether clean or unclean. I, have, I repeat every single time we talk about it, we don't. It is the biggest no-no. The employer can fire you. Wait, you don't put um gloves on when you're like just outside without helping your patient? No, not helping. You cannot put on the gloves, keep the gloves on, and you keep moving in the hallway. Sometimes we keep moving. Uh, we say, oh, I'm just I'm going to open the doors, uh, look at... You can't move. If you're helping your client, yes, you uh, you can put the gloves unnecessarily. Like you have a gloves on because you're moving in the hallway. It's a clean glove. It's not an empty gloves. You can't. I've seen people doing that. That's, they get fired. Okay? Any questions? Anybody has any questions? Um, um, you know, like, uh, we do not provide medication and everything for our client. Mm -hmm. However, why are we studying these things? Because you, I told you, when you, if you work in home care, mm -hmm. you are the ones who will be giving medications. Oh. Secondly, that... oh. secondly, if you are giving care to someone, if you do not understand that this person is getting some medications, when you are providing care, you will not be able to really make a decision of what's going on. You, it doesn't mean that you're not giving, but I told you a part of home care is you give oral meds and you give, and in facilities, you apply creams, you apply lotions, you apply Voltaren tubes, all those are medications. You put eye drops, you put a patch for them because that is that is a normal norm that. Uh, between the two nurses because otherwise when the nurse will have to apply this voltaren at eight o'clock she is in the she'll have to tell you can you open let's uh, uh open the pad and we will apply let's put it at whoever can you help me so we don't do it that time you are the you are the one who will do it that's why you need you do it not all the time you do it, but you need to know. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Go over uh, with this chapter. It's a very, very nice, like your book is a very nice book. I really, I never saw it before. I just touched it today. It's a very nice book. Go over with these key points. Look into it. For information mm -hmm. if you get time yeah. okay and tomorrow we will be here at 10 30. uh excuse me where can i get a list of uh, the courses which we need to do for the orientation courses online online we can, uh, we can, we can provide you if you go on and have you made a learning hub account uh, no, not yet. Uh, like I let might me, do it from different issues. What I would do, let me call, uh, let me talk to the school today. Let me ask them if they can provide you a list of... Uh, yeah, and uh, access code for criminal record check. I think they should, they should be the ones doing it for you and you have to pay, I think it was $25. I, I will uh, double check. 28, $28, but you need to have an uh, access code because they won't be sending the, the card check to me. They will be sending it to the institute. Yes. Yeah. I will talk to them today. Yeah, please, because uh, I don't yeah, know no. whether they can't really... No, 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 I will talk really to them. Something or, yeah, I might need to go to the college. No worries. I'll talk to them. We'll see. Any other thing? Why are you touching the screen? Bad. They're looking at you. They say, let's call the police for you. They're asking you, what's your name? Say. <laughs> what's your name? Say, what's your name? Say. Say. Huh? 
مش عارف هلو هاي 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 Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Tomorrow it's uh, ten thirty. Okay. Bye. Bye. See now you say bye. Bye bye. Say bye bye.